Hello friends, this video on life processes part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us start our discussion on nutrition in human beings. Human beings being a very complex multicellular organism, let us see how the steps of holozoic nutrition is carried out in human beings. So what kind of food human beings take in so holozoic nutrition would mean they take in fruits vegetables meat egg, fish egg milk pulses so there are a variety of uh, types of food material which is taken in by human beings so here also like similar to any other holozoic nutrition here also this nutrition will involve the same steps that is ingestion digestion absorption assimilation and ejection. So all these um, steps will be performed. But to, since this is uh, a complex multicellular organism, so each work or each of these steps is assigned to some specific set of organs. We all know, right, that in multicellular animals, cells group together to form tissues, tissues in turn forms organs, organs will again form organ systems and then the organism is formed. So every organ is given a specific job to do. So that is how in this nutrition process also each step of nutrition is carried out by a specific organ. Right. So we will now talk about the entire system in human beings which takes care of this nutrition part and how do they function. So the entire um, structure which takes care of this these five steps is known as the alimentary canal or sometimes it is also known as the digestive tract. So we will talk about this alimentary canal in detail. What are the parts of the alimentary canal? Which part of alimentary canal performs which function and all that. So let us start our discussion on alimentary canal. So what is it? It is a canal. The word canal itself says that it is some tube. It has to be some tube like structure. So this alimentary canal is a 9 meters long structure which starts from the mouth and it ends at anus. So you can imagine how long it is. 9 meters. It is not a small length, right? So you might be wondering that if this is a tube which starts from mouth that is somewhere here and it ends at anus somewhere here but if you look at the height of a normal human being if this tube is 9 meters long but the height of the, a, a person is not that great that it can accommodate that 9 meters long tube between mouth and anus so how is it actually this alimentary canal has different parts and this tube is not a straight tube inside the body it is straight to some extent and then it gets coiled at some other places so here we will look at the parts of the alimentary canal so what are the organs which together form the alimentary canal which is also known as digestive tract so the first part is mouth then buccal cavity which is also the oral cavity esophagus stomach small intestine and large intestine so these are the different parts of the alimentary canal so mouth is here right so this is mouth buccal cavity this is buccal cavity buccal cavity is nothing but the oral cavity mouth means i mean the, our lips through which we take in food so that is our uh, that portion is mouth when I talk about the oral cavity, it is the open space inside our mouth which is surrounded by the jaws, the cheeks. You have some open space, right, where we actually put in our food. So that is the buccal cavity. After that is esophagus. Esophagus is nothing but the food pipe, the pipe which carries food. So this is esophagus. Then is the stomach. So this structure is stomach. So here it started mouth, buccal cavity, this uh, esophagus, stomach. Then from stomach, if you see this orange line, it goes to an orange, uh, two very coiled structure. So that is the small intestine. 
and then again the small intestine opens up into a green coiled structure that is the large intestine. So now you can see that this alimentary canal is initially a tube like structure then it becomes stomach and then it becomes a very coiled structure called small intestine and then it ends up in the large intestine. So these organs together form the alimentary canal or the digestive tract. So now what we will study is how this holozoic nutrition or how the process of digestion occurs in all these organs or what is the function of each of these organs. So let us now talk about the mouth and the buccal cavity. So mouth. What is mouth? It is a slit bounded by movable lips. So we have our lips which is movable and that is why we are able to speak. We, are take in, we can take in food. right? So this is a slit like structure or an opening which is bounded by lips which are movable. Mouth helps in intake of food. So that means which life process happens in mouth or which part of holozoic nutrition happens here? Ingestion. Right? That is intake of food. So mouth helps in intake of food. Next is buccal cavity. Now as I said what is buccal cavity? It is the hollow cavity which is enclosed by the jaws and the cheeks. So this is the buccal cavity. So this is mouth and this is the buccal cavity. So if you see here, here you will have your teeth, you have the jaws and the cheeks. So this open space or the open area inside your mouth is buccal cavity. So what are the things that are present inside the buccal cavity? One is teeth, the second is saliva and the third is tongue. Now let us see what purpose does each of them serve. So when I talk of teeth, what is the purpose of teeth? Chew, to chew food. What happens when we chew food? Now the complex or bigger food particles are crushed down into smaller particles because teeth are something which are, which are quite sharp and that too inside the mouth if you look at the exact structure of teeth you will see that there are four types of teeth which are present inside our mouth. Molars, premolars, incisors and canines and each kind of teeth has its own purpose. Some of them help in grinding, some of them help in cutting sharp objects. Right? Some of them helps in biting. So each kind of teeth will have its own purpose. Right? So basically the function of teeth is to crush down the food into pieces. So the complex food is broken down into little smaller, little simpler, smaller particles. Right? So that is the purpose of teeth. Next is saliva. What is saliva? You would have observed that inside your mouth you always have some water like substance. Right? Even now you can check it inside your mouth, you will see that there is some watery like substance which is always present inside your mouth. In fact, when you see something which you like, for example, if um, you talk of anything, let us say it's a Maggie. If you are a big time lover of Maggie, so when you see a Maggie prepared in front of you, what happens? Your mouth starts watering, right? You get a lot of saliva inside your mouth. So what is that watery fluid? That is saliva. Okay, so what is the purpose? So why is this saliva present inside the buccal cavity? What is the purpose of saliva? The purpose is that when we take in food, the te our teeth will break the food into smaller pieces. Now the saliva, it is being watery, it will actually moisten the food. So the food is moistened and made softer. So the food becomes softer. So once it becomes softer, it becomes easier for us to chew it. Right? Because when it is mixed with a liquid, the food will become little soft. So the teeth will have to apply less pressure to chew it. So that is one function. And the second purpose of saliva is that it contains an enzyme called salivary amylase which converts starch into sugar. What is starch and what is sugar? As I said, whatever food we take in, they are all in complex form. So what is starch? Starch is a polysaccharide. That means starch is formed by too many glucose joined together. So when several glucose molecules join together, they form starch. Right? So starch is a complex structure. Starch has a complex structure. So this enzyme salivary amylase will convert this complex starch into simple sugar. That means it will help 
the starch to get converted into simpler sugars like uh, a disaccharide or a monosaccharide. So what is a monosaccharide? Mono means one. That means only one glucose molecule will be there. What is disaccharide? Two glucose molecules. For example, maltose. And what is polysaccharide? That means many glucose molecules joined together, that is starch. So this enzyme, salivary amylase, which will help to convert the polysaccharide starch into simple sugars, right? Okay. Now the third thing which is present inside the buccal cavity is tongue. What do you think tongue does? Tongue contains the taste buds to sense taste of the food. When we eat something, we, we understand that, okay, this is very sweet or this is very salty. So we are able to understand or we are able to make out that test because of the this sensory organ called tongue. So we see that mouth is the organ which actually helps in intake of food. So mouth has serves no other purpose, only ingestion will happen through mouth. When I talk of buccal cavity, in buccal cavity, the food is broken down into little simpler particles because the teeth will break it into smaller pieces the saliva will also make it softer and help it to get converted into simple sugars with the help of salivary amylase so now the next thing that is pharynx so this is a new name now you must be wondering that pharynx was not there in the part of the alimentary canal so what is pharynx so pharynx is a common passage for food and air. It connects to windpipe as well as food pipe. What is food pipe? Food pipe is nothing but the esophagus. This is the food pipe. Now in our body we have two different pipes. One is food pipe and one is windpipe. Okay. So which organ of our body helps in intake of food? Our mouth. So when we take the food inside through mouth, it goes to the buccal cavity. From buccal cavity, it goes to the food pipe. So there is one organ which connects it to the food pipe and that is called pharynx. So pharynx is situated here. So here if you see, this is the nose. So air goes in through the nostrils and food goes in through the mouth. Right? So this is the way for air and this is the way for food. So both of them are reaching a common point that is called pharynx. So pharynx is a common passage for food and air but later pharynx will differentiate into two different pipes. It will send the food to the food pipe, it will send the air to the wind pipe. So we will, uh, we will look at the structure of wind pipe later when we talk of respiration. So for now you should just know that for food to enter from buccal cavity to esophagus, it crosses through pharynx. Now in pharynx, no digestion happens here. It is just a passage. I mean, it is just a way through which the food has to cross. But no digestion happens here in pharynx. So you can imagine it to be something like this. Let us suppose this is pharynx. So the food and air both will enter through the pharynx. And from pharynx, it will get divided into two separate pipes. So this is the windpipe which is called trachea and this is the esophagus that is the food pipe. So the food and the wind will be sent to the separate pipes. So in pharynx also no digestion happens. So if you look at the mouth, did any digestion happen in mouth? No, only ingestion. Correct? Similarly when we look at um, uh, the buccal cavity, in buccal cavity did digestion happen? Yes, some digestion started in the buccal cavity because the complex food was broken down into little simpler substances. So let us now talk about the food pipe because right now we are concerned with the food. So now after from the pharynx, the food will enter the food pipe which is also known as esophagus. So esophagus or oes, I mean the, it is spelled in two different ways. You can spell it with O-E-S-O -E or you can spell it as E-S-O. It is pronounced as esophagus. So this esophagus helps in downward movement of food. So what does this pipe do? It actually helps the food to move downwards. Now how does it help the food to move downwards? 
Now on the walls of these this pipe on the walls we have there are some muscles which are present. Now these muscles keep contracting and expanding in periodic intervals of time. Now this rhythmic movement or this contraction and relaxation of the muscles on the wall of the esophagus help to push the food downward. So what happens is that let us suppose there is let us suppose if this is the pipe and let us suppose this is a food particle which is entering in. Now let us suppose if this portion suddenly contracts. So what happens since this portion contracts so the, the food molecule will slip in this hole. But as soon as it slips here it expands like this. So the food molecule will further slip somewhere here. Again this portion will contract so it will slip along the slope. Again as soon as it slips there it starts contracting. So with the contraction and the relaxation of the muscles on the wall of this esophagus, the food actually is favored to move in the downward direction. So this rhythmic movement or this rhythmic contraction and relaxation movement is known as peristalsis. So this process is known as peristalsis. So what is peristalsis? It is rhythmic movement or contraction and relaxation of muscles. So it is rhythmic contraction and relaxation of muscles on the wall of esophagus. So this phenomenon or which is called peristalsis pushes the food downward. So here also no digestion happens. So what is the purpose of pharynx and esophagus? It actually helps in carrying the food to the area or to the, that region where the actual digestion of food will take place. Right? Okay. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.